we've also seen a series of unconventional proposals in critical areas of the negotiations that make our work much more challenging. This is troubling. Well, it's getting nasty in the back rooms as fears grow that the U.S. is actually trying to sabotage the NAFTA negotiations by making excessive demands for big concessions from both Canada and Mexico. Now, may not be a surprise dealing with Donald Trump. That's like trying to brush your teeth with a chainsaw. You've got to be very, very careful. But what's really going on behind closed doors? Is this deal going sideways? To find out. I'm joined by the former Canadian ambassador to the United States, Gary Dewar, and the former conservative leader and now NAFTA advisory panel member, Ron Ambrose. Great to have both of you on the program today. And Ron Ambrose, I got to start with you. Um, are the U.S. demands now unreasonable to the point where Canada's got to start thinking, when do we walk away? Look, I don't think Canada should walk away. I think that we have to stay at the table. But yes, the Americans' demands are completely unreasonable. Uh, they may not seem unreasonable for the Americans, but they are definitely unreasonable for the Mexicans and the Canadians. And they put NAFTA at risk. They put the actual agreement at risk. And, you know, it's, I actually think of just a week ago, Evan, I would have said to you, you know, this is sort of typical negotiating in a trade agreement. I'm hearing that from trade negotiators about a week or two ago. But now, after this last round of talks, that is not what I'm hearing. I'm hearing that people are extremely worried about where this is going. And people use language behind the scenes like it looks like the Americans are driving towards a cliff on this and Canada will have to follow. And we don't want to see that. So I actually think it's time for us to be worried. I think we are worried behind the scenes. And I think we have to start activating everyone who understands why it matters that this agreement cannot fall apart. And that means on both sides of the border. All right. Uh we should be worried, says Ron Amber. She's one of the advisors, Gary Dewar. I mean, I get all negotiations get tense, but signals that I hear as well is that this is in the back rooms, this is more than just typical. The rhetoric and the demands are non starters. Where are you on that? Well, I think the rhetoric is a non starter, and uh, obviously the positions the United States has put on the table are non starters for Canada, uh, and we will state that unequivocally with, with the Americans. Uh, this is very serious, uh, we, but we have to figure out uh, a win for all sides, including Canada, and a win that's not detrimental to the Canadian public and Canadian business. All right. Let me get to the raw politics, because Gary Dewar is saying that we need to find a win, Ron Ambrose. Let's just look at it from Donald Trump's point of view. In my view, right. and maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but it's a win for him if he gets a deal that benefits America and it's by American and that's what his demands are all about. But it's also a win if he dumps the deal because that's what he's promised to do all along. So he has two ways to win. We have one way to win, which is getting a good deal for Canada, which he doesn't want. So where does that leave Canada? Well, it doesn't leave us in a good place. And that's why I think, you know, I think a lot of people thought that maybe the rhetoric coming right from the election with Donald Trump's talking about tearing up NAFTA and it's the worst deal ever. And some of the stuff that was we thought would be put on the table, it all, I think, came to bear in this last round where they actually put this stuff on the table. They're serious about it. The rhetoric is not changing. And the truth is, if you r read what he says and you listen to what Lighthizer is saying, it is very troubling. And while we can talk all day long about that Canada is not the target, it's actually Mexico, it's a trilateral agreement. And if they pull out, it affects us. And I got to tell you, I'm really concerned about this analysis lately where people are saying, oh, it's OK, we'll be better off without NAFTA or it's OK, we'll just fall back on WTO tariffs. All of this is very complicated and hard for the regular Canadian to understand, but that's not a good idea. NAFTA is very important for the Canadian economy. We are a small economy. We are very trade exposed. We're highly integrated with the American economy when it comes to supply chains, especially in manufacturing. And pulling out of NAFTA will create uncertainty in our economy. No, the world won't end overnight, but it will create uncertainty and we don't need that. And okay, that will affect but... jobs, it'll affect investment. And you know what, Canada, Canada is much more exposed than the United States. So I agree with you, the way things are headed, Trump wins either way, but Canada does not. And I'm really concerned about it. Is it time, given that, Gary, do, or do I mean, we want the deal, we got to stay at the table? I understand that. But do we have to now prepare for a plan B? And if so, what is that? What does life look like in Canada without NAFTA? Well, you always have to be prepared for positive results and, and more negative results. Having said that, 
Uh, I do believe that when we're dealing with a person who perceives himself to be a populist uh, in the United States, we have to, uh, we've done a really good job of outreach with the Prime Minister and the Premiers and business and labor uh, with the uh, uh, various parties. I think we've got to uh, deal with some of these populist arguments from the United States uh, with populist arguments back. We should talk in populist language. We should continue to make huh. the case we're your ally. Uh, you know, we're, we're there with you defeating ISIS. Uh, so you've got, we've got to talk over the White House and over the negotiating table and remind people of the populist reasons to have a good trading relationship uh, with Canada. Okay, logic may matter, facts may matter. Donald Trump, I'm not sure what his loyalty is to all that, and he's a, we know he's a protectionist, but Ron Ambrose, just candidly, do you think, now we're in round four, you've watched this as closely as anybody, do you think that the U.S. is actively trying to sabotage this thing, that there are poison pills in there, they're waiting for this thing to blow up, that hands Donald Trump some kind of political victory, he's vindicated, it was a lousy deal, I blew it up. I think they've set the stage for that. I think they absolutely have set the stage for that. Now, I have a, a shred of optimism left in that we have a little extra time. They've decided to put a month between the last round of negotiations and the next one. And I agree with Gary wholeheartedly that now is the time to activate and engage anybody that you know on the other side of the border that cares about the North American economy, but the Canadian and, and U.S. trading relationship. This is about more about the Canadian economy for us than it is about the American economy, frankly. They are a much larger economy. They can withstand more economic shock than we can when it comes to trade. But I am, I am worried. I think they've set the stage for Donald Trump to do either pull out or stay in. And, if, and you know, I know that this, you know, NAFTA will not unravel overnight. Business to business relationships will not end overnight if Trump sends that tweet out and says, you know, we're pulling out of NAFTA, but it will create uncertainty. There will be currency impacts on the Canadian currency. There will be impacts in the markets, and there will be a level of uncertainty around investment in Canada. So, you know, Trump has set himself up to win no matter what, and it's all about America first. And that's his ultimate well, populist argument. Gary, and for us, I think I'm, I'm concerned. Gary, last word to you. The new U.S. ambassador to Canada, Kelly Nightcraft, will present her letters of credence in Ottawa on Monday. I guess the question is, you're a former ambassador. Can she in any way help to move these negotiations forward? Some think she's more moderate than Donald Trump on this. Can she help Canada get a good deal? Well, she definitely can help, and I'm glad she's going to be in Ottawa, I think, on uh, Monday. I think that's wonderful. Uh, but I would say that for the new ambassador, and for the president and for the administration, uh, the criteria for being reelected in the United States is peace and prosperity. And you'll note that Donald Trump is engaging now on a tax reform package, uh, again, because of the, what he believes is important for the economy. Uh, as Wilbur Ross has said, in these trade negotiations, you, one of the criteria is do no harm. And if you rip apart NAFTA, there's going to be economic chaos and economic consequences. And I would suggest that that is also a very strong argument for Canada to have stability. Donald Trump can't get re-elected as president if he doesn't have prosperity in the United States. And part of that prosperity depends on trade, trade with uh, North America and trade with the world. And having this uncertainty will hurt U.S. companies around the world. So this is not necessarily, it's not necessarily a win to get a one-day headline and have unemployment in your own country. It certainly will create more difficulty in Canada, but it won't be without uh, consequences in the United States as well. All right, well, see if we can get the uh, Twitter machine out of the president's hand and we'll find out what happens with these <laughs> negotiations. Uh, Gary Dewar and Ron Ambrose, great to Thank have you. both of you on the program. Really appreciate your insights Thank you. today. Thanks so much.